Hey everyone, welcome to the Psychology Net and JRF lecture series. Today we are going to talk about psychological thoughts in Eastern system. Psychology is the science of behavior and mental processes. Through psychology, we can be able to find answers to questions such as What is consciousness or the notion of the self? Why do we behave the way we do even though we don't want to? The term psychology comprises of two Greek words, namely psyche and logos. Psyche means soul or mind and logos means the study of. Psyche was the Greek goddesses of the soul. Psyche literally meant soul in the early centuries. Later, philosophers began to translate it as mind. Though the mainstream of psychology originated in the West, it has a lot of Eastern influence in it. Eastern influence on Western thought goes back to the time of the ancient Greeks and Romans. Vedic psychology dates back 5000 years and forms the core of mental health. Eastern psychology concentrates on the exploration of the function and operations of the mind as well as methods to free the individual from suffering. The knowledge that enlightened Siddhartha Gautama was the self-management of mental suffering through mindfulness awareness practices. Mindfulness is the basic human ability to be fully present, aware of where we are and what we are doing and not overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on around us. Let us take a look at some of the historical psychologists and their thoughts. Patanjali was one of the founders of yoga tradition. Patanjali developed the science of breath and mind and wrote about it in Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Yoga Sutras of Patanjali is one of the scientific books written in poetic form. Padmasambhava was the 8th century medicine Buddha of Tibet called from the then Buddhist India to tame the Tibetans and was instrumental in developing Tibetan psychiatric medicine. Rashis was a Persian physician and scholar of the Middle Ages, applied the psychology of self-esteem in clinical treatment of his patients. Rashis opened the first hospital ward for human treatment of the mentally ill. Avicenna's Canon of Medicine was a standard medical text in many European universities for 500 years. In the Life and Work of Jalaluddin Rumi by Afzal Iqbal and A.J. Arbery, it is said that Avicenna performed psychotherapy without conversing and just by observing the movement of a patient's pulse as the patient recounted broken hearted anguish. Jalaluddin Rumi was a Persian poet, Islamic scholar and many more. Jalaluddin Rumi's view on psychotherapy was to embrace the dread, depression and anger as a blessing. Jalaluddin Rumi told that negative emotions were a bridge to a better life. Karen Horney, Fritz Perls and Eric Fromm studied Zen Buddhism. Zen is a school of Mahayana Buddhism. It is pronounced as Shen and Shen means meditation. Eric Erikson, a German-American psychologist, wrote the biography of Gandhi. Viktor Frankl was an Austrian neurologist and psychiatrist. Viktor Frankl was the founder of logotherapy. In his book, Man's Search for Meaning, he wrote about his experiences as a prisoner in Nazi concentration camp during World War II and describing his psychotherapeutic method which involved identifying a purpose in life to feel positive about and then immensely imagining that outcome. Abraham Maslow 
was an American born Jew who struggled to become a psychologist because at that period of time academians were not ready to receive a Jew. The transpersonal psychology that Maslow founded is a blend of Eastern and Western mystic traditions. Mystic generally means supernatural or altered state of consciousness. Stanislav Graf from Czech studied pre-industrial cosmologies including Egyptian and explored the significance of the posthumous journey of the soul in works such as books of the dead and the human encounter with death. Transpersonal psychology is a subfield a school of psychology that integrates the spiritual and transcendental aspects of the human experience with the framework of modern psychology. It is also defined as spiritual psychology. In the following videos, let's discuss in detail about Bhagavad Gita, Buddhism, Sufism and internal yoga. So please subscribe to my channel for updates and Please share these videos with everyone who is preparing for this exam. Thank you.